Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Gatling guns are a much-needed tool of present-day military operations, possessing unexcelled firepower, functionality, and dependability. Launching a rapid-fire barrage in small bursts is important to suppress enemy forces and defend key positions. As aerial combat gained predominance, the need for such a powerful weapon grew. Gatling guns were first introduced in warfare during the American Civil War. This gun was designed by Richard Jordan Gatling and served by Union forces at the Siege of Petersburg in 1864. After many decades, the Gatling-type guns were used on aerial vehicles. First was the Lockheed F-104 Starfighter, which mounted the M61 Vulcan cannon, a six-barrel rotary cannon, in 1959. By adapting the Gatling design to aircraft, fire was rampant and sustained. Aircraft could obliterate enemy humans on a continuous, stable basis. A new era of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground operations had begun. Perhaps one of the most renowned aircraft to carry a Gatling gun is the Fairchild Republic, A-10 Thunderbolt II, more popularly known as the Warthog. Born in the early 1970s, the A-10 was specifically built to provide close air support for ground forces. It was driven by a need for an aircraft capable of loitering at low altitudes, allowing it to target enemy armored vehicles and tanks. The Cold War context, with the potential threat of large-scale armored warfare, particularly in Europe, played a significant role in its conception. The A-10's rugged design focused on survivability, ensuring it could withstand heavy damage and continue flying. This durability made it a favorite among ground troops and a critical asset in operations. Its first major combat role came during the Gulf War in 1991, where it proved its worth in numerous ground attack missions, solidifying its reputation as an incredibly effective close air support platform. Looking at the specifications, the A-10 is a single-seat airplane ranging from 53 feet 4 inches in length by 57 feet 6 inch wingspan and 14 feet 8 inches in height. The dedicated wings of 506 square feet were designed to provide stability and control at low speeds and are perfectly suited to carry out close air support duties. The empty weight of this aircraft is 24,959 pounds. It has a gross takeoff weight of 30,384 pounds and a maximum takeoff weight of 46,000 pounds. For various missions, maximum weights have been given as 47,094 pounds for close aerial support and 42,071 pounds for aerial anti-armor missions. Internal fuel is 11,000 pounds, which provides a great loiter time over battle zones.
The plane is powered by two General Electric TF 34 GE 100 turbofan engines, producing 9,065 pounds of thrust, which provides sufficient power to accomplish both high and low altitude strike missions. The A-10 is a low-wing, jet-wing aircraft with a maximum speed of 381 knots at sea level and a cruising speed of 300 knots. The stall speed is at a gross weight of 30,000 pounds, that is, a speed of 120 knots, or 138 miles per hour. The combat radius of the A-10 is approximately 250 nautical miles, allowing it to loiter over the battlefield for extended periods in support of ground troops. The ferry range is 2,240 nautical miles, or 2,580 miles, providing wide operational flexibility. The rate of climb is 6,000 feet per minute, while the maximum altitude is 45,000 feet. The maneuverability of the A-10 results from its wing loading of 99 pounds per square foot and its thrust-to-weight ratio of 0.47, allowing it to fly long distances with a heavy load of fuel and ammunition. The specifications of the A-10 Thunderbolt II are impressive, yet it is the A-10's firepower that defines its ultimate role in battle. Central to its arsenal is the GAU-8A Avenger, a formidable 30mm rotary cannon that holds 1,174 rounds. The A-10 can hardly carry a different sort of armament on its 11 hardpoints, eight under the wings and three under the fuselage, with a total load of 16,000 pounds. For self-defense, the airplane is armed with AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles, while AGM-65 Maverick missiles are a usual choice to strike ground targets. This array of armaments and electronic countermeasures is why the A-10 remains a competitive force for the close air support mission. Gatling guns are not just for aircraft, they are used extensively at sea also. The Navy has many tools at its disposal to defend its vessels even when they're in the middle of the ocean. Close proximity threats are those that are near enough to the ship to pose an immediate danger. They range from fast attack boats and unmanned vehicles to aerial threats like warplanes and drones. One of the most critical of these is the Close-In Weapon System, or CIWS. This radar-guided Gatling gun system is capable of firing 20 millimeter rounds at a rate of 4,500 rounds per minute. This creates a dense wall of fire capable of disabling and destroying a wide range of threats. Codenamed Phalanx, the CIWS is fully automated allowing it to provide rapid target detection and engagement. With its one-mile range, it is often capable of detecting and destroying a target 
before a human operator would have been able to identify the threat. Most importantly, it can be used against multiple targets, including aircraft, missiles, and drones. Most U.S. Navy warships are equipped with some form of Vertical Launch System, or VLS. These are weapon systems built into the deck of the vessel and are capable of firing surface-to-air missiles to intercept aircraft, drones, or even other missiles fired by the enemy. Most VLS designs use reloadable canisters or cells, which eliminates the need for traditional deck-mounted launchers. When tied to a combat system like Aegis, these missiles can be launched against multiple targets at once with minimal human involvement. Another key aspect of shipboard defense is RAMs, which is short for Rolling Airframe Missiles. These are more lightweight and far faster than their vertical launch counterparts, with models like the RIM-162 ESSM and RIM-166 being able to intercept their targets in a matter of seconds. Between their speed, small size, and low altitude, they are nearly impossible for enemies to detect before it's too late. Warships, like aircraft carriers, need to be prepared for 360-degree warfare. Indeed, since World War I, dozens of nations have begun using submarines to attack surface vessels from below. This is why naval vessels are equipped with powerful sonar systems that detect and track submarines or their weapons. In most cases, the best way to protect against submarine attacks is to use their own weapons of choice torpedoes against them. Torpedoes are essentially underwater missiles. They move through the water via a small onboard propulsion system and use sonar as a means of guiding themselves to their target. Most Navy torpedoes carry a high explosive warhead designed to detonate upon contact or proximity to the target. This allows them to do immense damage to boats above or below the waterline. Depending on the model, a torpedo can travel at anywhere from 30 to over 100 knots and boast a range of up to 50 miles. Lightweight models have a depth capability of around 2,000 feet, though others, such as the Mark 48, can reach depths of 4,000 feet. Unlike submarines, surface vessels typically fire their torpedoes from above the water via side-mounted launchers. This allows for quick response to close-range threats, as well as more measured attacks. Once the ship's sonar or other detection systems locate and classify the submarine, the crew will select the appropriate torpedo and program the guidance system with the enemy sub's location. The torpedo is then ejected via compressed air or hydraulic pressure. By combining raw volume of fire with precision engineering and careful maintenance, 
From Richard Gatling's invention on Civil War battlefields, to the massive GAU-8 Avenger at the heart of the A-10 and the rapid-firing Phalanx CIWS on Navy decks, these weapons fill a unique role no other single system fully replaces. They suppress and deny, protect and enable, and when paired with advanced sensors, skilled crews, and layered defenses, they become true force multipliers. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.